So we're going to take a look this morning at what the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and particularly we're going to look at what the Word says about this. Um, you know, there's lots of controversy about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit. So we want to take a look and see what the Word of God says, and we want to follow what the Word of God says. So as believers in Jesus, we need to follow his example by obeying everything he commanded us. And he did command, he said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So the four Gospels and the book of Acts teach us how the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus and his disciples and new believers in the New Testament church. And there's a clear pattern that's, re that's repeated over and over again. The coming of the Holy Spirit, always followed by fa salvation. So the Lord Jesus did not start his own ministry without, before he had received the Holy Spirit. John baptized Jesus in water, and as he came out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. Furthermore, the Lord Jesus would not let the church start before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And he gave his final instructions to the disciples before he was taken to heaven. He commanded them to wait in Jerusalem until they had been baptized with the Holy Spirit. See Luke and, and also in Acts. We will see in the study that it is a common practice in the early church to make sure that believers were filled with the Holy Spirit after salvation. In the New Testament, the coming of the Holy Spirit into a believer's life is referred to as receiving the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All of these speak of the same encounter with the Holy Spirit and are crucial to a Christian uh, to, to really get further into their commitment with Jesus and to really mature as a Christian. We need the infilling of the Holy Spirit so we can walk in His fullness. It is the Father's desire for us to walk in the power and fullness of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told us in John 14-16 through 16 that He would send us the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has come and He's ready to touch any believer. Many believers come to a place in their walk with the Lord where they realize that the lack of the power of God in their lives, Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when you do receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it, it is after after receiving the baptism, you realize that things have changed. And Paul said, do not get drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So, continuing in the New Testament, we're, we're encouraged to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, you receive the Lord Jesus into your heart as you put your faith in Him. Yet, and John says, he, to all who received Him, to those who believe in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human descent, but born of God. Although the Holy Spirit is clearly involved with the new birth, there is much more of the Holy Spirit that the Father promised. Jesus said, And I will ask the Father that he will give you the can another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you, and you will be in him. The Holy Spirit is the gift the Father promised. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Again and again, Jesus is telling us about the, the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, coming for all believers in the New Testament. And again, Jesus spoke and said, Do, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my Father, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift of the Father and is received when Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said these words concerning the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Exalted to the right hand of God, he, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit has poured out what you now see and hear, indicating, again, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You note in each instance of the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit was received after salvation. On the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Sud suddenly a sound like the, like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were, seat where they were sit sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on, the, on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The 120 believers were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The result was that they spoke in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So we see again here in the book of Acts that Philip goes down to Samaria and preached the gospel. Many, many believed the good news and were baptized by Philip in water. After this, Peter and John came from Jerusalem. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Peter and John placed their hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit. 
Again, Paul on the road to Damascus, Paul encountered the Lord Jesus and, and got radically saved. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it entered in placing his hands on on Saul he said brother Saul the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit Acts 9 9 17. So it's good to note that Ananias was just a regular believer nothing special he wasn't even one of the 12 apostles and he knew to lay hands on Paul for him to receive the Holy Spirit. I wish we had that today. Anyway, Paul later on writes about how he, how he speaks in tongues. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you because he knew he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, you're supposed to speak in tongues. Although a lot of people are baptized in the Holy Spirit and don't think speak in tongues. That's another issue, which I'll get to later. But in, in Cornelius Acts 10, Peter went to the house of Cornelius and preached the gospel to them. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believer who had, believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water, they having received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Again, all through Acts you're going to see this. The, the, they, they, have, they have received the Holy Spirit just like we had. Obviously, Peter was born, was, was born again but they had, the, they had that second blessing of the Holy Spirit. And then in Acts 11, Peter returned to Jerusalem and reports to the apostles what had happened. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? And they, they, were, they were astounded that the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles. Note that in this passage, different terms are used for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, depending on what form or what viewpoint the, the experience is described. The Holy Spirit came in all. The gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out. They received the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. God the Father gave them the gift. So all these different ways of expressing the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And again, Paul went to Ephesus where he found a group of disciples. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So that's a good question to ask yourself. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we, we have not even heard that the Holy Spirit, when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was a common experience in the church that believers, every, every, believers everywhere encountered after they became believers in the Lord Jesus. And that's what is for you and for all Christians. This baptism of the Holy Spirit is a, is a key element of, the, of maturing in the consecration you have to Jesus, and in a maturity as a Christian. So later, Paul also writes to the Ephesians, and he talks about <clears throat> having believed you are marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So this refers to when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1, 13-14. This deposit of the Holy Spirit is literally a down payment or earnest of heaven and the power of the age to come. And remember, the blood of Jesus is the seal of our eternal life. But the Holy Spirit is the seal that he's talking about here in Ephesians. Here Paul in Galatians talks about receiving the Holy Spirit. And he does not come by obeying the law, but through faith in Christ. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by trying to keep the Jewish laws? Of course not. For the Holy Spirit came upon you only after you had heard about Christ and trusted him to save you. I ask you again, does God give you the power of the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you as a result of you trying to obey the Jewish law? No, of course not. It is when you believe in Christ and fully trust in him. Now God can bless the Gentiles too with the same blessing he promised Abraham. And all of us as Christians can have the promised Holy Spirit through this faith. Galatians 3, 3 2, uh, 5 and 14. So we can see very clearly that Paul in a number of epistles is clearly talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it, and Paul is emphasizing in these epistles how important it is that all the the Christians at the time were was were receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Clearly, the Bible is very clear on this. That you know, you we as Christians need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and that's why Paul mentions it in in, in many epistles and goes into some detail. And it's obviously for us today as well. So we're going to look at how. To receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and let's go over what Jesus said. <clears throat> Jesus said, 
Have faith in God. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and, and it will be yours. Very important. <clears throat> By the blood of Jesus, every believer has been made worthy to receive everything God has for them. Therefore, ask him and he will do it because he desires to bless you. And Jesus again said, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. We must ask the Lord Jesus to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. We must ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill us with his power and give us a new language to worship the Father with. In the book of Acts, we see believers uh, receive the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. We see this in Acts 8 and Acts 9. So we must receive by faith in the same way that salvation comes by faith. So everything from heaven comes by faith. Paul again reminds of relations. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or believing what you heard? So again, how do we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? As believers, we need to have a desire to receive everything that the Father has for us. We should have an expectation that everything he said in his word is true. He is a good father who is faithful to his promises and he gives us without finding fault and he is no respecter of persons. And Jesus talked about being thirsty. He said, come and, and, and if anyone is thirsty, let him come and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. It is clear by this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. And it's also clear that when Jesus was glorified, that that, that was when Pentecost happened. And Jesus told the disciples that wait until, wait for the Holy Spirit to come, that they would receive the Holy Spirit, and they did at Pentecost. And that's for all believers. The Holy Spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit, is for all believers. So again, what, what do we, we must do? We must believe from the scriptures that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for is for me. And yes, you received the, the Holy Spirit when you got saved, but this is it's very clear if you look at all these scriptures that we just went through that <clears throat> that Paul was very clear and Peter was very clear that that you when you, after you receive Jesus that you receive this the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Again, go back through the scriptures we went through here. So what must you do? You must ask. And if we look at Luke 11:13, this is very clear that how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So that's what you must do. You must ask the Father to give to give us give you the promised Holy Spirit. He is a good Father and good thing and gives good and perfect gifts. How much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Again by faith. So when you do this, you ask by faith and then you receive the Holy Spirit by faith. <clears throat> And remember, only Jesus can baptize the person of the Holy Spirit. So it's very important that no man, even though men lay hands on them to receive the baptism, it's very clear in Matthew 3.11 that only Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> John, John said, I baptize you with, with water for repentance, but after me comes the one who is more powerful than I and whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. It's very important. So you ask for these two scriptures. Basically, you receive the Holy Spirit. How much more will the Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Luke 11, 13, Luke 11, 11 13. And then Matthew three eleven, that Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And if you have any questions, or you can email me, patbuckley82 at gmail.com, and I can walk you through this and help you with it as well. Now, it's also very clear that you can get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when you do, the Bible tells us very clearly in Acts and a lot of the epistles that we can also speak in tongues. And if you email me at patbuckley82 at gmail.com, we can give you the video about speaking in tongues. But it, come, it comes together. with the Holy, in, in The Bible is very clear in the New Testament that when, you get, when they received the Holy Spirit, they were speaking in tongues. And we go into some detail and in, in what, in, in, again, biblically, what speaking in tongues is all about and, and the benefits. And there are many benefits of speaking in tongues. Again, patbuckley82 at gmail.com.